Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay and I live in South Louisiana. Down here, we hold our food culture in high regard. Many of our regional dishes are known around the world, but there's one of our delicacies that happens to be a personal favorite of mine, the crawfish. In other parts of the world, it's known as mud bugs, crayfish, crawdads, and even yabbies. In short, they're a freshwater crustacean that breathes underwater using gills and feeds on both animals and plants and they are downright delicious. The most common way to serve them is boiled in spices, but their tail meat can be used in all sorts of other dishes. Unfortunately, the last year hasn't been kind to the crawfish down here in Louisiana. A severe drought and heat spell killed off many of the crawfish that were burrowed underground for the summer. Because of that, market prices have been really high and availability has been really low. Growing up down here, we always bought our own crawfish and never went out to catch them. Without having to catch them first, it's much easier to get right down to the eating part. Over the last few years though, I've really enjoyed trying to catch my own. And boy is it challenging. Locating just the right conditions that crawfish like is really hard to find. That's why most of the crawfish industry revolves around man-made ponds, where you can control many of the variables that provide optimum habitat for crawfish. But still, just about any swamp, bayou, or ditch can be loaded with tasty crawfish. You just have to find them first. And that's where today's video begins. I went out with my buddy Delane to catch out some new places to catch crawfish. All right, folks, here's spot number four. We're gonna try this little flooded spot here. Now, Delane has caught them here before. The other spots, I've caught them. So by combining our knowledge, spreading a wide net, let's see if we get them, huh, bro? Right, Joe. So we, we think a lot of this is rainwater. Um, but hey, that don't mean it won't hold crawfish. Ideally, you'd like to see a little bit more vegetation, but it's gonna start popping up. You can see some alligator grass starting to come up down there. They got, that's actually clover right there. So that's how I know it was rainwater, because look, that's clover. I think that's alligator grass right there. So in this spot, I like that they had a lot of canes going down. They had a lot of cover for the crawfish to hide in from birds, fish, anything trying to get it. And uh, it's a real secluded spot, so not too much traffic comes in and out of here for you know the crawfish to just be breeding and whatnot. So this was a good spot that I took a gamble on and uh, it paid off. So. So you're we'll sitting closer to the wood line right now. Right. Yeah. So last year, all of this was filled with this. So now okay. that it's gone, I think they probably moved further to the Right, to line. get to some cover. Yeah. Right. All right. We all set. We got 10 out here. So we're going to let these sit for a few days. I'll come back and check them. These got to go back to work. So let's see what we get. It looks good. I went back a few days later with my nephew Luke and my son Jack to check those crawfish traps. Not a single one, but we did get this pretty cool freshwater eel. With another missed opportunity to get some tasty mud bugs, I decided to try again with my buddy Tristan. And uh, there he is. Go get them, babe. We're going to get them sea daddies, baby. They trying to hide from us. They trying to be too expensive for the common man to buy. So we got motivated. We got bait. We're gonna find them. Let's go get them. All right, we got hoagies today, folks. This is really the best bait that you could use. We, you know, we try to use free bait when we can, but uh, it really don't get no better than pog pogies because they're so oily. They just put out a, a lot of oil. They got a lot of uh, natural oil that goes out into the water and draws the crawfish in. So we're dropping one in, closing it up. It's ready to be set. All right, here we go. Tristan pulling the P-Rog. Go on, get him, baby. All right, now if you're wondering why we're doing ditches like this, we don't really have a big freshwater swamp in the area where we live. Um, that's a little bit more west of us. Kind of a place where a lot of commercial guys go. So there's no point in us driving all the way out there just to go for a day and set a few traps when it's not close to the house. So we have to locate them in places like this ditches drainage canals duck ponds stuff like that but it's a challenge i'm gonna tell you uh they're not always where they should be they don't always make sense so we're coming to try this spot this is one that tristan's had success at before i don't know folks 
we might have a boil today we're gonna figure it out all right so i have to cut the pogies so they don't float but we're basically got the pogie down in the trap like that traps closed up and then we're gonna stuff them in the grass this is uh looks like cattails crawfish like to get down around this stuff so we're gonna stuff it down there in the cattail like that and that's it we got probably about 10 of them we're fixing to put out all right so there it is down there in the alligator grass that's good stuff right there and we got alligator grass and cattails that we're setting in uh i've had a lot of success with alligator grass but i know cattails are good too all right folks we done got in the nitty gritty here look how cool this looks this should be where they at if i'm a crawfish i'm gonna be in here nice and safe away from predators able to eat all the little roots and invertebrates i need this is their house right here all right tristan we pushed through buddy Sick. <laughs> them up. there you go all right go. we got a few more to put out this should pay off folks a shell wow do you know what that is a snail shell it is a snail shell it's an apple snail shell boy look at you are you daddy apples <laughs> <laughs> all right nets so far are empty let's try trap empty ain't looking good folks but you gotta go to know well folks the saga continues empty traps and empty nets this this stuff ain't easy all right well that's another spot just didn't work out uh we know there's crawfish here just like the other spots i've said we know they're there but is it the right time of year has the water temperature been right for long enough uh there's a lot of factors going to it this is a tricky thing to do i promise you that's why crawfish cost so much now y'all are seeing how hard they are to catch so all right folks it is spring and i'm still thinking about crawfish we haven't been able to really find them yet they're kind of a really hard to find species we have a lot of brackish water down here and we have a lot of fresh water too but not every piece of fresh water not every freshwater scenario is going to hold crawfish unfortunately you really got to look around and find them so today i'm back on that grind once again i'm jared serenade you're watching outside the levees and i'm down here in south louisiana and right now I'm getting some of my traps ready and waiting on my buddy Delane to get here. So let's see what we're doing. All right, so what I have for bait, this is called a Menhaden, a uh, pogey, I think bunker in some places, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a forage fish. It's, you know, very prevalent from the Northeast Atlantic all the way down here to the Gulf. And a lot of folks use this for bait for blue crabs, for catfish and we're using it for bait for crawfish. So what I'm doing is I've got these bigger drop nets here that I use for uh, crabbing, but I've got, they're also good for crawfish and I'm putting three pieces in these little bait cages. The cage is an easy way to have some bait without losing it. So these have bait cages. So I'm gonna bait up some of these. All right, now the other net I have is just an old school single ring net with some uh, mesh and bridle. And it drops down very similar to the other ones I have. The other ones I have are just really beefed up for deeper water, for harder current. These are good for shallow, calmer water. And then uh, if you've done any amount of crabbing, you've probably seen this before. It's just a little shower curtain style clip. And... Uh, just like so so we're gonna get these all baited up loaded up and get on out there all right y'all well we on the board we didn't get skunked <laughs> those guys were picking up traps and gave us a few so but now me and d is gonna go put out our nets and see if we can't catch our own be nice to get a little half a sack you know anything more than that would just be a bonus but let's go see what we can find one on the bank there we go one right here let's see what kind of depth we're working with right, so that one 
Yeah, we could, we could go more to the middle. Right there. All right, let's try right here. We have to try a little bit close to the bank, a little bit off the bank, kind of get an idea what they want to do. All right, y'all. Well, we got quite a few out. I got a, quite a few more want to get out, so we're going to go take care of that, and we'll see y'all when we start checking. One little bitty baby. We'll let him go. Got one. Right. A crab! Look at that. Boy, it is not your lucky day, my friend. <laughs> I'm gonna let him go. He's light. Alright. There's a nice one. Nice little crawl, Daddy. All right. All right. Nothing. Damn, bro. They're giving us, giving us some fits again. Here they go. Being hard-headed. Come on now. Come on, baby. Have some crawfish. We need that. We need to pull up that net, and it's ticking. Two. One's a keeper. One's not. Call that one a keeper for today. Let that little one go. Oh, he fell down in the boot. All right, there you go. All right, first deep water, y'all. Oh, that's the ticket. It was deep, out in the middle. All right, well, we may have to make up some more deep water. Deep out in the middle, huh? All right, y'all, we've checked about 20 so far, and uh, not really killing it, but now we're getting to another stretch, so we'll see if, because that's how crawfish are. They'll be in certain stretches. You'll have a drainage dish like this, and they'll be in 300 yards versus the whole thing. So that's kind of the challenge we're in right now, is finding what stretch they want to be in and what depth. So we've ran a lot of shallow. Seemed like we had one, you know, that was deep that had quite a few in it, but the other few didn't. So it's, uh, I'm telling you, man, this is a tough little thing to do, catching crawfish like this in these ditches. But, but we determined. Got a nice one in that one. There he is. <laughs> you got him one too. We can't be too picky today. We're not catching enough. So something like that, we could definitely turn that into food. Ooh. Where you not? All right, y'all, that's the haul from the first spot. That should be about four pounds or so. Not too bad, but we want to get a few more, so we're going to go try one more spot. But it's nice to have some progress, nice to finally get on a few. We're having a wonderful time, but thank y'all for being with us. All right, y'all, we at spot number two, putting some more traps out. Basically the same, a drainage ditch along the levee. Nothing that particularly different, except this one is not nearly as deep. So I don't know if that's good or bad. We're gonna find out. Oh, all right, all right, all right. We're getting a few. All right, well, we have got the trophy of the day. Show him that gigantic. I'm trying to get him, because if he pinch me, I'm like, yeah, I'm we're going like, to the hospital. <laughs> Look at this thing, y'all. Let it go. What in the world? So when you come to catch crawfish sometimes in South Louisiana, you're also gonna catch these guys. What? Look at that hammer, boy. Put him in there, D. We eating good, son. <laughs> we might be boiling after all, D. I wasn't gonna boil, but damn, son. That's something big. All right, let's go check some more. All right, we got a few. Let's keep whatever we can. Throw that bucket up. See if we can get to it. Oh, that's a good one, my man. <laughs> oh, right. oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Huh? Huh? What? What? Oh, no. <laughs> Now we found them. Took us a little while. We got them now, partner. All right, folks, we found a much better spot. So we're going to go ahead and work these nets real good, see if we can fill up this basket a little bit more. We'll check in with y'all in just a little bit. All right, that was another good one. 
Finally got a big crawfish. Even though they still green, finally got a big one. All right, we're gonna have to move some nets down a little bit. We're finding a little bit of a hot spot here. So. All right, aside from the crab, we got our first significant bycatch of the day. Little turtle was trying to get him a free meal, boy. We done messed him up, little fella. Go ahead, we just want the crawfish, we don't need you. That's a nice net though. If we could get them all to catch like that, man, we'd be in business. That's what we're doing today, folks, catching crawfish here on outside the levees. We're fishing uh, some drainage canals. So what will happen is uh, these drainage canals, thankfully, hold water year-round. So a lot of these crawfish weren't affected by the drought, and uh, that's why we have so many of them. And they're really early. You know, they, they, they don't have that deep, deep red. So these are uh, young crawfish going through the molten process, a lot of them. You see the deep red on these big You'll see how that one's got the deep red claws. But a lot of these are just just starting their process. They're gonna get bigger and uh, we're gonna keep catching them. They're, we just caught a bunch. They, they were flying out of the trap. I couldn't get it up fast enough. They were flying out of that net. y'all we definitely were able to increase our yield we got a lot of crawfish now we just had to work and find a spot as you've seen we tried we tried uh, river batteries we tried ponds we tried lilies you name it we tried it but we finally found them that's the name of the game you just keep going until something until something clicks and something works now we got something good to eat so you know what that means now it's time to get in the kitchen Look at my beautiful work of art that Bree made for me. And Jack, we got, of course, the outside the levees alligator. We got some prime, if you're into prime. We got a fish, a crab, and some boil brews. Look at that, a work of art. Thank you so much, Bree. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, we had a little boil with most of them, but I did save some to cook something a little bit different, as y'all seen us boil on this channel many times before. Uh, so what I want to make is an omelet. I've got five eggs from the yard, from my buddy Tristan's yard cracked in here. We're going to add a little bit of half and half, and we're going to season that up with some salt, pepper, and spice. Now, these are crawfish tails from a crawfish boil, so they do have some of that, you know, actually a good bit of that. Uh, flavor left from crawfish bowl and seasoning left from there so you don't have to do too too much here because you're getting a lot of it that's already in the crawfish look how much more yellow those eggs are when they come from the yard that's crazy he said they're gonna smell a lot better he said watch they're gonna smell a lot better than walmart eggs all right so i'm gonna drop a good handful into the eggs now okay all right drop some in now i melted down probably a tablespoon and a half of butter and we'll go ahead and get some eggs in there let them start cooking i'm on a medium low heat not anything super super hot so you want to just let this kind of come up and cook see it's already starting to a little bit all right, we're getting there, getting pretty close. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my cheese. And you could add whatever you want, you know, uh, onions and all that stuff, but this is really all we felt like 
adding to it today so but yeah you could put sausage in there whatever uh, i want the crawfish to shine that's why i'm not putting too much all right and that's pretty much it we want to get that in the plate there we go oh that's a pretty omelet y'all and then and then we're just going to top it off with some pico de gallo which is why I didn't put too much on the inside. And voila, that's it right there, y'all. All right, folks, we finally found them crawfish. It was a lot of work. We tried a lot of different spots, but now we know where they are. Hopefully we can hit them a couple times. This is the omelet. It looks amazing. I cannot wait to try it. I'm starving. Mm. Needs one more thing. There you go. Huh? Top it off with a few crawfish tails. Why not? Much better. That's how we do it on Outside the Levees. That's why you should subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, I appreciate y'all every time. We'll see you on the next one.